A sea lion seldom comes alone, a playground for the cute but voracious marine mammals. And I am immediately reminded of my last encounter with them in Canada's wilderness, but far from it. Yes, behind me a lighthouse, water, are we by the sea? Not quite. We are in Orlando, Florida at SeaWorld, probably the world's most famous water park and a very well-respected zoo for all sorts of sea creatures. Recently, there have been massive protests from animal rights activists who are generally against dolphin shows and certainly against orca shows. I want to take a look behind the scenes today is SeaWorld really an animal prison or a place where people lovingly care for the animals in their care? First impression, the staging of the large underwater aquariums is really good. You could spend hours here and just enjoying watching the behavior of the sea turtle at leisure. As a diver, I have encountered them so many times, but rarely have I been so close to these fascinating creatures. They share the pool with the manatees that are native here in Florida, but in grave danger, because of their slow swimming and the many motorboats on the coast. Just how such an encounter goes, one can imagine. That's why I have my first appointment at the SeaWorld Clinic. Secluded from theme park visitors, things are far less glamorous here. These gentle sea cows are the current patients, bodies slashed open by the propellers of reckless skippers. I'm meeting the vet in charge. The animal rescue is a very vital part of SeaWorld. I think it was about 35,000 animals? Yes, we're very wow. proud of that. Do you just do that pro bono or is it something the visitors expect from you? We've been doing that as long as we've been in existence. It's par part of our mission. Uh, it's part of why we're here to give back um, to these animals and to the environment. Uh, and we, uh, we do cover the expense of that, but uh, everything that we make from the park when guests come to visit actually goes to help these animals that we're rehabilitating. Mm -hmm. So some people are a little bit uncomfortable with all these animals in captivity. So they think, oh, the animal has to be in pure nature. What would you say as an expert as a vet? I think that uh, there are very, there are a lot of differences in habitats. Um, we certainly hope that people learn about animals in their natural habitats and that they gain a greater respect for those animals, um, for their environment and take care of it. Um, we strive every day to take the best care and provide the best habitats uh, for the animals that we have here. Every individual animal uh, means so much to us, whether it's a rescue animal or one of our residents who lives here or, or who was born here. So the poor little animal has a good chance. I would immediately agree with Stacy on the protection program. Who could possibly object to rescuing and caring for animals in need? This is an area in which SeaWorld is unquestionably committed. The animal clinic and laboratory are also really impressive. I am going to go out on a limb and say that the animals here have better and more comprehensive health coverage than most of the millions of mostly American visitors coming to the theme park. But do they really have it better here than in the wild? The next stop is Mind Terrain, the cute little dolphins. A personal encounter, which can be booked separately, gives small groups of guests the opportunity to get up close and personal with the intelligent mammals who have always sought out human companionship. Is this fun for both sides? If you look at it like that, you would say yes. But of course, what we see is a result of a long and intense training. Underwater I see a really spacious pool in which the dolphins whiz through. No question, it can't replace the open ocean, but can any zoo in the world match that? If, of course, it keeps anything other than a sluice. Of course, it is nicer when animals are out in the wild than in marine tanks, no matter how beautiful they are. On the other hand, one day here in SeaWorld and the visitor has learned more about the animals than maybe in his whole life. And yes, I admit, 
It is perhaps one of the most beautiful experiences I have had with animals to be so close to a dolphin. Oh, he's so cute. Is, is this the kind of relationship from nine to five or? It's, it's more than just a pet relationship. A lot of guests will ask us, oh, it's like you have a pet, but really these guys are my yeah. coworkers. They become your best friend. It's our job as their trainers to provide all of their care and training um, that allow them to live long and healthy lives here with us. <laughs> so I pour my heart and soul into caring for them and training them. We form a history with them. We spend a lot of time every single day we spend holidays with them. Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, all of our time is spent so caring nice. for these guys. So you really do begin to know them as individuals. You learn their personalities, how they can be silly and <laughs> playful and very curious. And since they're all unique um, from one another, you really start to form those connections with them. Don't you, Alpha? Isn't that right? <laughs> yeah, you sinker. <laughs> At this moment, I'm completely absorbed. And I just want to believe that my dolphin is actually enjoying its interaction with me too. It's a flipper idea we all carry around with us. That's why it is a clash of emotions to enjoy the scenes at the neighboring dolphinarium. Why does it have to be bad what dolphins and their coaches present here? Would an animal behave so boisterously if it wasn't feeling well, one may ask naively. Of course, the principle of positive reward applies in training, but I feel a great harmony amongst those involved. At least, that gives me some reassurance. A large component of SeaWorld is animal-free, because we are not visiting a zoo here, but an amusement park. Water is nevertheless an elementary component. There is hardly an attraction where it does not splash, foam and roar. Well, we are in sunny Florida, and getting wet here isn't exactly punishment for most of the year. With temperatures usually hovering around 30 degrees centigrade, no power surge is more welcome than the one that delivers a cold shower. <laughs> yeah, let's not kid ourselves. Roller coasters are the standard when it comes to kids deciding where to go. The dolphins and the orcas can dance and jump as they like. The roller coaster, though, always makes it higher, faster, further, though, especially here in Orlando. The day of shooting for the roller coaster means no eating beforehand. The Mako shoots off with those courageous enough to strap themselves into its seats. No other roller coaster in Orlando makes it higher, faster or further, when I was there at least. Things can change quickly in this part of the world. The Manta is even tougher. Here you don't sit, but hang upside down in the seats. Afterwards, I was admittedly a little shaky. Kraken then already points to the future, sometimes you can experience it virtually. Alternatively, with a VR headset over your nose, there's a fast pace right through the ocean full of sea monsters. But then it's back to the animal cuddle corner. These clumsy little fellows are an eternal favorite with the audience. From a fish's point of view, they are among the most aggressive predators in the seas. You can't really imagine that with this training. From close up, it looks a bit different. The little guy has terrible bad breath, and his teeth are a reminder that you don't really want to get your hand caught in his mouth. Still, I have been asked to feed him, but as his trainer reminds me, always only from a safe distance. Just throw the fish towards the head. Poor throw, excellent catch, and there's a hello to thank you too. Okay. I think my Mick needed a few minutes to recover from that roar. The show itself is pure nonsense. Children in particular scream with delight because seals, lions, otters and walruses have such a cuddle factor from the distance. Humanization is the magic word of training. We see the matrix and interpret intelligent behavior. Well, as long as it's for public education then, but a bit heretically, I do wonder if a show like this, not one opposed by animal rights activists, really does serve the purpose of animal welfare and support them in their natural lives. 
To SeaWorld's credit, they do put a lot of effort into making the experience areas beautiful and visitor-friendly. A little trip from Florida to the almost eternal ice. In the Antarctic, the penguins are waiting, also a crowd pleaser. But before that, I quickly test one of the restaurants and no fish, please. Well, when it comes to the quality of the food, we'll rather keep silent. And as for environmental protection, plastic plates, plastic cutlery, plastic cups, there's still room for improvement. Small addendum, in the meantime, SeaWorld has decided to do without plastic. Microplastics have even been detected in the ice of the Antarctic, the habitat of those creatures. The habitat is really impressively laid out. Even as a visitor, you stand in the freezing cold, not only above but also underwater. I have permission again to shoot backstage as well. And the great thing is that visitors can also book such tours to get up close to the animals and learn more about their habitat and needs. After all, as the animal keeper tells me, hardly anyone can afford a real trip to the Antarctic. So this being in such an open habitat is already gratifying and most of them want to take the penguin home right after petting him. Orcas certainly couldn't be taken home for a cuddle. By the way, the scene was recorded with a big telephoto lens. I have access to the training and admittedly also very mixed feelings. Can I really be feeling what I must not feel? Is it okay to appreciate just how well the trainers and the orcas harmonize with each other? After all, the criticism is overwhelming. A trainer with a sunny disposition who proudly tells me that her killer whale, who also immediately comes to her at the glass, is celebrating its 13th birthday today, a teenager then. It's a fascinating bond between the two. It seems like an almost playful understanding. At the same time at the platform a morning ritual. The orca recognizes the cup slides photogenically onto land and presents itself perfectly for the daily urine sample for the medical check. Of course, these teeth remain deadly. SeaWorld knows this from painful experience in 2010. You want to block it out here as the trainer plays with the whale. Dog owners always say too, he just wants to play. So that's the first little breakfast for Kila. The first one. There's likely 100 more after this. For all the positive feeling at this moment, of course, there always remains the basic question. How does the orca feel if it could reflect it? How would you describe your relationship to them? So for me personally, I'm a pretty, I'm a high energetic guy. So one of our whales, Katina, she's 42 years old. She is a rock star. She can jump through the roof. She has a <laughs> lot of energy. So her and I feed off each other really well. Where some of our other animals, they're a little more laid back, more like they like to play and have fun at the glass. So certain trainers have different relationships with them than I would. That's what's really neat about it. Now, I really don't have a favorite whale, but I do. Katina's obviously probably okay. my favorite whale. I've known her it's, for over 15 years. It's so his she, girlfriend. <laughs> don't tell my wife, but yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, so I've known Katina for 15 years and, and it's, it's really special, it's really cool. And we get to share with, with folks like yourself and all the guests that come here. So it's really awesome. Happiness and commerce go together here, of course. And just as clearly, the pure joy de vivre that is staged here is the result of perfect training and not a playful voluntary decision on the part of the orcas. But still, everyone will see what they want to see here. The vast majority of the audience is happy to see these wonderful orcas live for once and engaged in the nonsense presented for the audience. And if only a few get involved afterwards because of this, when it comes to protection in the ocean, doesn't that weigh more heavily than a radically negative approach? So, what's my conclusion now after visiting here at SeaWorld? One can, of course, radically argue that animals do not belong in captivity, animals belong in the wild. But what I have seen here today, this dedication, this love also evident in the trainers and with which they interact with the animals, that has impressed me very much. 
And I think that's why one can be allowed to continue to visit parks like this. Parks that also care about animal welfare, that participate in rescue programs, that support research. Then you can just be happy, just like the children.